Hey guys, Will here. Welcome back to the channel. Now it's the moment of truth. It's time to fill up the system with some distilled water. So we're going to use distilled water to begin with just to leak test the system and flush everything out. Probably run it like this um, through the entire leak testing process as well as the original boot up process as well just to check that everything's working okay. Then we'll flush it all out, replace it with coolant later on. Now the reason I'm doing that is A because I don't want to waste good coolant and B because if there is any leaks in there it's a lot easier to clean up demineralized water than it is to clean up dyes and you know coolant and things like that. This will just evaporate out of things like carpet if we have an absolute disaster whereas dyes are a little bit more permanent. So, um, so yeah, look, in this video, we're gonna be getting started into it. So look, the stuff that I've got here before me is I've got my five liters of demineralized water. We're not gonna need anywhere near that much. We've got some paper towel here as well, which we'll put in strategic places throughout the case to protect against any drips that we might get. I've also got my filler plunger here which I'll use to inject the water into the reservoir from the top. Now, if you are interested in seeing a little bit more about the flow path and the drain setup on this system, do check out my previous video where I took you through that, as well as a cool way to pressure test the system before you actually fill it with water. So as it stands right now, I have pressure tested the system. It held a little bit of air pressure for an entire night. So I left it for, I think it was 11 hours and it still had some pressure in it the next morning. So I'm feeling pretty confident that there's not gonna be any major leaks in here. I haven't left any things like ports open or anything like that. If we do have any leaks, they're gonna be slow drips, hopefully. Um, that's the plan anyway. Other thing I've got here is just my bowl as well. So I'll tip some water into that. Just makes it a lot easier to suck it up out of the bowl as opposed to sucking it out of this once the level starts to get down. So feeling a little bit anxious about it, but these are the things we do on this channel. So let's get stuck into it. All right, so we'll start off with putting some paper towel down. Now, the areas that I'm the most concerned about with this layout is really sort of behind the GPU here. The two plugs that are on the back, if they leak, it's gonna go straight down between the back plate and on the back of the actual GPU itself. So, not ideal, but there's nothing that you can really do about that in a vertical setup. Uh, other than that, as well, if the, if the fittings on the EK water block on the CPU leak, they're going to sort of go down on the motherboard as well. We'll try and minimize that as much as we can by sliding some paper towel in behind there. Pretty much everything else that could go wrong, we're pretty safe. The radiator sits in front of the graphics card, so that's not going to drip directly onto anything there. Um, all of these fittings here are well clear of any electronics, and of course underneath there's no electronics at all at the moment. The power supply is not even installed in the case. I'll show you the power supply and how we've rigged that up in just a moment for, for um, leak testing. But what we're going to do is we're just going to put some um, paper towel in some of the obvious places. So, chuck it up underneath here. Now of course because the demineralized water isn't dyed, it is going to be a little bit more difficult to see if it is leaking but we're just going to have to keep a really keen eye on it and look I'm feeling pretty confident about it anyway I, because I've pressure tested it already I'd be very surprised if there was any major leaks now I'm probably going to regret saying that now but <laughs> we'll see how we go so let's stick that under there too sort of try and get in underneath here a little bit as much as I can and um, just make sure that we're not going to get any drippage onto the motherboard if that water block does leak. So. so the other things you need to consider as well is you're always going to get a drip from the bottom of a pipe so in this case it's going to run down the pipe it's going to drip from the lowest point so it's probably going to drip off here it might even run as far as that and drip off so i'm going to put some paper towel here as well to protect that riser card all right now we need to spin around to the back of the case and get some protection underneath the pumps and everything in there too okay so it's not super critical here because even if it does leak it's not really going to go on anything electronic there's no electronics down here at all at the moment as i said the power supply is out so Spin that valve up for now so we can slide the paper towel underneath. And we'll do one more in the back as well. And we should be safe just underneath those fittings in the front. So one thing I do need to explain just quickly is how I'm actually going to power the pump with the power supply completely disconnected. Now, obviously we don't want to have anything electrical connected inside the computer when we do this other than the pump. That way, if the distilled water, which is obviously non-conductive to begin with at least, spills on anything, it's not an absolute catastrophe. All we need to do is just open it up, 
clean it all out with alcohol and we should be good to go. So we've got our power input to our pump there. Now this is a PWM pump, but it's an EKD5 pump and that actually runs at 100% when it doesn't detect a PWM signal from the motherboard. So theoretically when we power on the power supply, we should get the pump running at 100% regardless of the fact that it's not plugged into anything else. So running back here, we're going into our power supply and then we've got our ATX connection here. So what I've done is I've bridged the fourth pin to the third pin and what that does is it tricks the power supply into turning on when we power it on. So all I'm going to need to do is just switch it on here, switch it off here and that will drive the pump on and off as we go. So we'll plug that into mains power in a second. First thing we need to do is fill the reservoir a little bit. So our fill port is up here, so we'll remove the plug out of that. That's done. Check once more that our drain is closed and the port's closed, the valve's closed, because obviously we don't want to be pouring water in and have it coming straight out the back of the case. Now what we are going to need to do, because we've got this U-bend here before the water goes down to the pump, we're going to need to fill the reservoir up beyond the height of this pump before the water starts to actually come out and down into the pump area. So we'll need to fill it up quite high before it will actually flow through and then we'll switch on the pump for a moment, wait for the water to come up. What we'll probably do though is we'll get this bottom area of the case full of water first, check that there's no leaks in the bottom and that's all good before we switch the pump on for the first time and we'll go from there. So let's get into it. You can see the water is starting to sit in that fitting now, so we need to get up as far as the top and then hopefully it'll start to flow down. Alright, so what I figured out is that if I actually put my fitting on here and I pump some air into the top of the reservoir, I can actually push the water down and fill that bottom part of the loop that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill that pipe and then we'll fill the reservoir again and we'll continue on. So take this off, fill it with some air again, poke that in there. And then when I push this down, you can see it forces the water in. see now the water level is actually sitting inside that pipe. So once we actually get to the point where that pipe is full, Alright, so we've got a small air bubble there, but what I'm hoping is now when I switch on the pump, it will draw the water through and hopefully a bit of a siphon effect will happen. So, we'll take off our fill port again quickly. There we go. Ah, oh, there we go. Now it's, the water's starting to come up. There we go, it's starting to fill into the water, into the graphics card. Oh, that looks so cool. We should start to see it come out this side now. I think we might be at the point where we want to add a bit more water again now. The pump just didn't have enough push to get it up through the radiator while it was all empty. So we'll continue filling. So far so good, I'm not seeing any wet paper towels, which is a good thing. Switch it on again. Now we're getting something. So 
this radiator should fill. There it comes out of that radiator and through the loop. So fill it up again. Now would be a really good time to check for leaks. Once more, I'm not seeing anything. Everything looks dry. Everything feels dry. There's no water dripping out of these fittings at all, which is good. So we'll just check underneath as well. Bone dry. Woohoo, it's working. <laughs> all right, let's fill it up some more. Now I'm feeling exciting. I was nervous as shit before, but now I'm feeling excited because we're actually getting somewhere and There we go, now we're getting somewhere. Just having a really good look for leaks. So you can see the air is kind of rushing, that's just what the bleeding process is, so it's pushing all the air out of the system. Over time all these little bubbles that you see will disappear. So we're going to run this system for a good few hours. Probably won't run it overnight because I want to be able to keep an eye on it, but I'll leave it running on the desk next to me at work in the morning and just keep a loose eye on it during the day. Run it for 24 hours like that. And if everything is good, the next step is to power up the system. And um, yeah, fingers crossed, crossed we don't have any DOA parts and have to start again. But um, yeah, so far so good. There's no leaks to speak of whatsoever. Oh man, I, I feel such a sense of relief because I was quietly, between you and me, I was shitting myself. <laughs> but anyway, we're all good. So one thing I will just quickly note is that the water level at the moment is sitting right next to that attachment point there. So what I can do is I can monitor whether that water level looks like it's dropping. Now it is going to drop a little bit just as all the air comes out of the system because obviously the air is going to be replaced with water. So I will see it drop over time, but if we suddenly see a significant drop in that water level we know that we've got a leak somewhere but I'm just gonna sit here next to it for the next probably 10 20 minutes or so and just watch very 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 closely make sure we don't have any issues whatsoever and yeah that's that okay so we're about an hour into leak test and chill now and what I've done is one of the one of the things that is really important when leak testing a system is to heat cycle it so what happens is as the coolant heats up and cools down the, um, the, the, the pipes and the metal fittings all expand and contract slightly and that can also create leaks in a system that would otherwise not leak. So cold testing the system is only a part of the system and because we, because we don't want to actually power anything inside the, inside the computer to actually generate heat, we, um, we don't know that it's not going to leak until we power up the system. So what I'm doing is I've got my lamp here which is just an incandescent lamp but it puts out quite a bit of heat and I've got that pointing at my front radiator to heat it up and I'll use my infrared thermometer here. So the, the, the um, radiator itself is 41.6 degrees at the moment and our water temperature is 32 degrees. We'll test it here as well. 31. 31 on the card itself. 31 as well. So check this one. And again, 31 degrees. So what we're doing is we're generating a little bit of heat into the system just to check that it all behaves when it expands and contracts. Now I'm not gonna heat it up massively. I'm not gonna take it up to like 70 degrees, but if we can get it up to sort of that 35, 40 degree mark, I think that's gonna give us a pretty good indicator that everything is good. But for now, no problems at all. There's not a skerrick of moisture anywhere. I did actually see one little drop up here and I freaked out thinking that my radiator was dodgy. But then I realized that when I was filming, I flicked this around and a little bit of a little spot of moisture came out. 
I cleaned it dry about 45 minutes ago and it hasn't reappeared so I'm confident that that's all it was but look everything's looking great so hopefully either later on tonight or tomorrow I will be able to actually power up the system and check that everything works. Okay so we've run our leak test for about 12 hours now and absolutely no leaks to speak of whatsoever and you can see up here the motherboard lights are starting to blink and that is because we've got our power supply all plugged in now everything is wired up and we've also got our screen and keyboard so what I'm going to do now is switch it on for the very very first time I never did a bench test before I rigged everything up so we're just going to see what happens and hopefully fingers crossed everything will be okay so press the power button we've got lights we've got fans I can see the pumps running Looks like we've got a signal on the screen too. <gasps> it's booting! <laughs> Sweet! Alright, so... Obviously we're going to have a bunch of errors because we haven't configured anything at all yet. But um, saying ensure that the CPU fan is connected properly. We're not actually using the CPU fan header, we're using the um, water pump header and we're using the um, high amp output for all of the fans as well so we're just going to have to configure the BIOS so that it's not expecting to see a signal from the CPU fan header uh, everything else looks like it's all good so we'll go F1 to enter setup alright so what I want to do now is monitor the temperatures for a little while make sure that nothing gets crazy hot before we start to install windows alright so under tool Graphics card information, GPU temperature 27 degrees. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna monitor these temperatures for half an hour or so, just make sure nothing goes crazy before I start to install Windows. And yeah, we should be all good, but no leaks. Everything seems to be working. We've posted, everything's being detected properly. It's detecting the SSD, it's detecting all the RAM correctly. So it looks like everything's all good. So 31 degrees on the CPU and 27 degrees on the GPU, which are the two I'm most concerned about in case there was any issues with the installations. Okay, so it looks like we're pretty much done building the system now. We've got a couple of little things we'll probably need to tweak and um, get things set up as well, but I'm going to get stuck into installing Windows now. Then we can get into benchmarking and tweaking and overclocking and all that sort of stuff. So do stick around. Plenty of stuff to come with the channel as well. And of course, as always, if you do have any questions at all related to what you've seen in this video, do let me know in the comments below. As always, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'm going to get stuck into this, so I'll see you in the next video. Bye.